Hey guys, what's going on? Tool Cruise here, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the GoPro camera versus the Insta360 Go2 Mini Action Camera. So how do these two cameras compare? We've got my wife here, Twin Chan, to help with today's video. So a big thanks to her for being our model today. But anyway, which camera is best? And especially, we're gonna be comparing for cycling footage. We're out here in our cycling gear, we're out here on our road bikes, and we're gonna be doing a bunch of different tests with these cameras. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so first we're gonna be looking at the GoPro Hero. We're actually using the Hero 8 because I don't have a Hero 9 yet. I didn't find it worth justifying the upgrade to get the 9. I think the quality is really similar. So this isn't a comparison of the top of the line most recent GoPro, but I think the quality on the Hero 8 is just about as good as the Hero 9. So we'll be using this camera. And in comparison, we're gonna be looking at the Insta360 Go2. So this is their new tiny little mini action camera. And I've been really amazed with my test with this camera so far and the quality of it. Like look at the size comparison. It's not even like a third or a quarter of the size of this GoPro action camera. And the Hero 9 is actually a lot bigger. So we're gonna be comparing the video in both of these cameras. The GoPro does shoot a little higher resolution. It does shoot up to 4K 60 frames per second. Whereas this one, I think it's about 2.7K or full, a little bit higher than full HD and it shoots up to 50 frames per second. So for today's test, we're just gonna be shooting in 30 frames per second. And this camera does actually come with another carrying case right here. So the battery in this is a little bit small and you're only gonna be able to get about 10 minutes of continuous footage with it right away. But you can pop it here in the charging case in between shots and it'll charge up while it's in the case. So we can get, I think, a total of about 30 minutes of footage on this camera. Whereas the GoPro does have a case here so you can adjust the battery, you can replace the battery to a fully charged one and you can get a really large SD card so you can get really large video size files. So that is one big comparison. We're also gonna be comparing a bunch of different mounts today. So we've got some different adapters for the Go2 camera here. And we've also got a mouth adapter here. We've got a selfie stick. We've got the chest mount. We've got a neck mount. We're gonna be comparing a lot of different angles today. So I'll leave some timestamps down below in case you wanna to skip to the part that you're interested in. So with these both being action cameras, they're really easy to use, but one big difference with them is this one is actually a lot easier to use. And that's because it's just really small, really lightweight. It only weighs about 26 grams, so it literally feels like nothing. And it's also magnetized, so it'll stick to anything that's magnetized. We've got a metal pole here, so I can pop it up there and I can just fill myself easily, which is really nice. And it also has a variety of interesting magnet mounts. So this one attaches to your hat, the clip on your hat, just like this. And it's magnetized, so we can just pop this in. Right there, I don't have to deal with anything. And this camera is ready to go, so we're ready to get some first person view from the head angle, bird's eye view. So we're gonna be comparing this angle first, and I don't have an easy way to do this with the GoPro. So this one just goes in your mouth like this. <laughs> so this is a really interesting mount and my first time using it on the channel. And this mount was actually sent over to us by one of our fans over in Australia. So a big thank you to Rob for sending this over to us. It's a perfect mount for today's video and filming this comparison. Um, because this is a little bit heavier. So the only other option is to stick it on top of the helmet, but I don't really like helmet mounts. So we're gonna use this to compare with the bird's eye view of the Go2 camera. So let's get started with the first test. Okay, here we are testing with the 360 Go2 up above, and we've got the GoPro about to go in my mouth, so I won't be able to talk anymore. Let's begin our first test. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Oh, I can talk a little bit with it in my mouth. Here we go.
All right, that's the end of the first person view eye level test. We're actually here at Morikoto Park, which is a dedicated cycling course, but you have to get off in between each lap, but it's a five kilometer dedicated cycling course. Perfect place to film our test videos. So the nice thing about this mount is the hands-free approach, but one thing I'm noticing with this GoPro mount is it is really heavy. So securing that with my mouth, securing it with the jaw, for a short time it's okay, but for a few minutes it starts to get a little bit tiring. Okay, the next mount we're gonna test is the most popular mount for cycling, I think, and that is the chest mount. So this is pretty much what we use on all of our cycling vlogs, but it's really hot and really uncomfortable, especially on long rides. So I really don't like using it very much. And if I don't have to use it, that's a big lifesaver. So it is really secure and it does get really good video, but check this out. So we can just pull this camera off from the magnetic sensor and boom, there we go. We've got a chest mount on this camera ready to go. This actually is done with a, so this necklace is magnetized. It just hangs over your neck, goes underneath your jersey. And the cycling jerseys are really thin, so there's no problems with losing the magnetism. And then it just sticks there while you ride. So if you want, there are some other adapters that you can use with this camera. So it's magnetized here, but it goes in a traditional like GoPro action mount mount here. So this can go in the chest mount just like this, but for the sake of comparison, I wanna get the same video and see how they compare. So how does this solution work with the magnetized necklace versus the chest mount traditional GoPro angle? We'll compare both of these right now. So let's go test this one out. Okay, here we are starting the test with the chest mount of the GoPro and the magnetic necklace of the Insta360 Go 2. So I've got the GoPro angle down as much as I can right now. And the nice thing about the Go 2 is you can actually adjust the angle in post a little bit. So when we start here, my angle on the GoPro camera will be a little bit too low, but I can adjust that manually with my hand on the chest mount so we want that to be level with the direction we're riding but with the magnetic necklace it's still pointing downwards a little bit but this camera actually gets kind of like a half 360 degree range so I can adjust this in post in the application so that's another big difference between these two cameras that I should mention is that the GoPro it creates all the files ready to go on an SD card so you can import those files onto your computer and you're ready to edit those videos however you want. However, with the Insta360 Go 2 and all the Insta360 cameras for that matter, this creates kind of like a, a master file and you need to export that master file to get the stabilization done and get all the like post-processing done. They have a whole bunch of different effects you can use. And the nice thing about that is you can adjust the angle and the, the lens. So GoPro has three different main modes. You can get linear mode, which is really narrow. You can get wide mode and you can get super wide. So those are the three main different angles. But with the GoPro camera, because it processes everything at once, once you set that before you film, you can't adjust it later. So if you set it as linear and you try and adjust it later, you're not gonna be able to do that. So you're stuck with what settings you started with. Uh, but the benefit is you get the files a lot quicker. You don't have to process the footage later to stabilize it. But with the Insta360, you have the option to change that. So if you want a linear view, you can do that. So we can adjust this all in post, however you want, which is really convenient. So you have complete control over your project later. And when you film, you just have to hit record. Uh, make sure you are filming in pro mode. That's a big, important thing. If you don't film in pro mode, you don't get the editable file and it will stabilize the footage automatically. So you have files that you can use right away, but the stabilization won't be at its absolute best. If you want the best quality out of this camera, you have to film in pro mode and you can adjust that later and export it. So it depends on what you're doing. It does create an extra step, but it does give you a lot more creative control. So it's kind of a give and take depending on what you want. Uh, if you're filming a long, long, long video, so again, over 30 minutes, I would go the GoPro or traditional action camera style, uh, no doubt. So if you wanna film your full commute, you need something with a long battery or something that you can change the battery, or you're gonna be filming long, multiple videos, you can replace the SD cards, go with the traditional action camera. But if you wanna just get like different interesting shots, 
So the other big advantage of this camera compared to the GoPro, and I love my GoPros, I've been using them for years, but it can't do this. So I'm stuck in the chest mount, but if I wanted to get a selfie of myself, I can't do that with the GoPro. But with the Insta360, I can just grab it, and here it is, I got a selfie mode. I can talk to the camera, I can point to my beautiful wife, and I can get all these different angles. And if I wanna switch back to the chest mount, if I need to get my hands back on the handlebars, there we go, I just pop it on there. Or if I wanna to switch to the bird's eye view, I can do all this while I'm riding my bike without stopping and I have perfect control over what angle I'm getting. And so now my GoPro is still stuck in the same angle. If I wanna change this angle, I have to get off my bike, unscrew the harness, change the angle, which yeah, I mean, you get more security. There's a chance the magnet might drop. So one solution isn't exactly perfect over the other solution. It depends on what you want to film. As for the durability of the magnet or stability of the magnet, I think it's fine with cycling clothes. Like if you're wearing normal clothes or like a jacket or things that are a bit more bulky, it might be a bit more sensitive. But cycling clothes, it's really thin like spandex. So it's really not gonna do much, especially if you're wearing tight cycling clothes. It's really secure, it's not moving at all on me. Another thing I wanna do is a quick microphone test. So this whole video, we've been using external audio, but let's do a quick test. This is the go-to audio. I think the audio is pretty decent, especially now because it's on the magnetic necklace. It's really close to my mouth, um, but it is really windy today. So keep that in mind. We're also cycling in a variety of different conditions. It's really dark and shady right here, but it gets really bright once we're out in the sun. Okay, let's switch. Now we're on the GoPro audio. So how does the natural GoPro audio sound? Again, I think they've made some improvements with this on the Hero 9. So this is the Hero 8 audio. But in general, I've never been too impressed with the, the GoPro audio. That's why I always use external audio. I'll leave links down below to my external microphone I use, but it's not plugged into either camera. Um, there, you can get an adapter. You have to get the like mic kit for the GoPro to be able to plug in a, a mic. And with the GoTo, I don't think there's an option for it. So I just use a separate recorder and I sync the audio in post. Okay, and for this downhill section, I actually wanna switch. I wanna get the bird's eye view. So again, that's the really nice thing about this camera is you can get what angle you want. So now we can get two perspectives. So this whole video has been a comparison, but the other cool thing is you can combine these cameras. So you can get two different angles and you can switch between them. So if there's a section where you wanna film yourself talking and you don't wanna to have to unmount your GoPro, you can just pop up the GoTo, turn it on for a second, film the speaking section and you got a perfect vlog setup for cycle vlogs. You can keep filming your whole ride. You don't lose that footage. And if there's a section you wanna to talk to the camera, just turn on the go-to, here we go. We've got double angles. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break here at the next break stop. This camera is so ridiculously light. Like, even though the GoPro, yeah, it's really light, but you do notice its weight a little bit, especially if you hold it for a while, but this, it's 26 grams, it's nothing. But the battery is also nothing, it only lasts about I think 10, 15 minutes per video. That's the record limit. Then we gotta charge it up a little bit. So for our next test, we're gonna be testing out the neck mount. This is a new mount for me. I've never actually used this for a cycling test before, but I'm pretty curious to see how it works. I think it moves a little bit if we get too low, but if we hold an upright position, it should stay pretty stable. I don't know, I don't have too many high expectations, especially with the GoPro, because this moves around a lot, but this does have horizon lock built into the camera, so I think it'll perform a little better with this camera. Also, another interesting thing with this case is this case does have a quarter inch mount, so we can plug in a selfie stick like this, extend it on the selfie stick, and pop this on. We've got a handlebar adjuster for the quarter mount, and we can pop this open, and there we go. I can film myself while riding. So we're gonna do a double filming right now with the neck mount and with this filming me. Let's see how this performs. Uh, so the Insta360 is about a foot away <laughs> from my face, but I think we get a pretty wide view with this camera. 
I'll try adjusting the angle a little bit with that as well. So how's the GoPro footage holding up? I'm just riding normally. It is bouncing a little bit back and forth. So yeah, I don't have too high of expectations. This is my first time testing this setup. And normally when you mount a camera to the handlebar or any part of a bike for that matter, it absorbs a lot more vibrations, but I'm really impressed with the stabilization on the GoTo cameras and GoPros as well. They both have amazing stabilization, but especially this tiny little GoTo, because of the horizon lock, uh, that adds extra stability, I think. Okay, we've got a smooth section here. Let's pick up the pace. And when I get closer down like this, the camera's actually really close to me. All right, for the next test, we've switched positions. We've got the GoPro on the selfie stick and we've got the GoTo here. I'm gonna pop this on the neck mount. So really, it's the same position as the magnetic necklace here, but I wanna test the stability of this with if we can get some better stable footage with this moving around, because I haven't seen the GoPro footage yet, but I don't have too high of expectations because this camera has horizon lock, whereas this camera doesn't. So let's go. <laughs> Okay, starting the next test, we've got the GoPro on the handlebar mount, and we've got the Go 2 on the necklace mount. Ready? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's go. Yes, the Go 2 is moving around quite a bit on the necklace mount. <laughs> so we'll see how that footage turns out. I'm also curious to see how the GoPro handles on the selfie stick with the selfie mount on the handlebars. Can you guys also see Toontown behind me? I'll try and move out of the way. Here we are, back where we started our test. We'll take another quick break. All right, and while we got the selfie stick out, I wanna do a quick walking test, handheld test of the selfie stick. So right now we're using the GoPro, uh, just walking around. I've got the sun shining on me, so I should be really bright right now. Let's turn around, go against the sun, um, we already know the GoPro does an amazing job with the walking, the stabilization, and even if I were to do some running in my cycling shoes, the stabilization is top notch. How does this do with the detail of our bikes? We're here in the shadows. Tung Chan is enjoying the shade. We're taking a quick break here. This is the cycling course. Beautiful day out today. And how does the detail look on our bike? So let's get nice and close. Disc brakes. Okay, we're gonna do the same walking test, this time with the Insta360 GO 2. We'll do the same course. So here I am in the beautiful sunlight. And for today's videos, we're mostly gonna be using the natural color profile auto for everything. And yeah, this is how it looks like with the sun behind my back. And let's do a quick walking and running test. So let's run across here. I think this does a pretty good job with the stabilization on the running test. Next, let's do the bike test. But first, we've got a nice, beautiful view of the cycling course here, sunny day. The other Unfortunate thing with this camera is it's too small, obviously, to have a preview screen, but we can attach this to our cell phone if we want to get a preview, but I rarely use the preview screen with action cameras because you generally get everything in focus, everything looks good, especially Tunchan looks really good. <laughs> All right, so that pretty much sums up our comparison of the GoPro Hero action camera and the Insta360 Go2 action camera. They're different cameras for different purposes, and how do you think they compared? I personally am really impressed with the Insta360 GoTo's stabilization, especially considering the tiny little size of this thing. Still, I think the GoPro Hero camera is gonna be our main action camera of choice just because of the longer battery and we film some really long cycling vlogs. But when we wanna get interesting shots or add extra shots uh, to get multiple perspectives of the bike shot and also a selfie mode, maybe at the same time, I think combining both of these cameras does a really good job. What was your favorite angle? Let us know down below. But before we finish up this video, I have some extra accessories that I wanna test out for this camera. And those are ND filters. 
I've been filming videos on YouTube for a long time, but I've never used ND filters before. And I actually got contacted by Freewell, which makes ND filters. And they sent me a pair for the Insta360 GO 2. Unfortunately, there aren't any good ND filters that you can use for the Hero 8. They have them for the Hero 9, but I don't have that model, unfortunately, so I can't do a comparison. So this isn't part of the comparison between GoPro and Insta360. This effect should be the same regardless of what camera you use. But basically, these are sunglasses for your cameras, and I want to add some extra tests using these lenses and see how they perform. So this comes with the filter 8, the filter 16, the 32, and the 64. Basically, the higher you go, the better it is on really bright sunny days. So we're going to be testing out each of these modes and see how it compares. So inside here, we've got our four different lenses. And you got to be careful when you use these. This is actually my first time using these, so I haven't touched them yet. So I think we can just unscrew this cap like this. There we go. That's the cover for the lens. And then we can pop one of these lenses on. Okay, so we're going to start with the lowest setting first, the ND8. Let's see how this compares and we'll gradually switch them out. So this just screws on like this. We want to make sure we don't touch the inside of the cover. But the outside should be fine. We can wash that off if we need to. Okay, so a big thank you to Freewell for sending over these sample ND filters for us to test out. Let us know if you like the following shots. So we're going to start here with the filter 8 and work our way up to the higher filters. So here we are with the ND8 filter riding with the sun at our backs. How does this look? Try and get some different angles. And we should especially notice this when looking at the wheels and get a more natural look at the wheels so the spoke should be more blurred. But I think we need to put on the higher level ND filters to notice a bigger effect with that. Okay, here we are testing out the ND16 filter. So how does this look? Is the sky a little bit better? We're looking with the sun at our back, so Tung should be really well lit right now. Let's turn around and face me. So I've got the sun behind me. Do we notice anything different? And let's take a look at the bike spoke. So this should be more noticeable. Okay, so let's spin the wheel really quick and let's pay attention to the spokes. So I believe we should get a bit better of a more natural blur effect as we move up with the ND filters. Without ND filters, when it's really bright, we see every spoke perfectly, which is really unnatural. So let's test this out. This is with the ND16. Here we are testing out with the ND filter 32. So moving up to the mid range right now. Do we notice any difference with Chunchan? Okay, and next let's do the bicycle wheel spin test. How does this compare? This is the ND32. Okay, and it's really bright outside today. So I think we're gonna need the 64. So I'm gonna pop that on for our next bicycle test. We're just gonna go all the way up to the max level. All right, and here is the final ND filter. This is the ND64. This is the strongest one they have for the brightest day. And we've got a bright sunny day right now. There are some clouds in the background, but it's a pretty blue sky right now. So how does this look with Tunchan? How does this compare? I'll put up all the other shots right now so you can see everything in comparison. Let us know if you notice anything different. Again, we are shooting in auto mode right now, so I think we can get some better effects if we use some manual pro settings, but I'm still a beginner, so I'm doing baby steps right now. Let us know what you think. Here's me in the background with the sun behind me. How does this look? Okay, and last, let's do the bike wheel test. Is there a difference with this? Do you notice a difference in the blur effect? Okay, so let us know what you think. Did you notice a difference between these shots? We're not gonna know anything until we edit this on the computer later, but I'm really curious to see how these perform. And again, I'll be leaving links down below in the description box of everything that we've used in today's video. So anyway, I think we filmed enough comparison shots today. Let us know what was your favorite shot. Let us know what you think of these ND filters and which camera you like better and you wanna see more videos about in the future. We're gonna continue on and enjoy our ride. Thanks as always for watching everyone. A special thank you to all of our awesome supporters over on Patreon who help keep this channel going. We couldn't do it without your guys' support, so big thank you to you guys. And we'll see you next time here on Tuo Cruise. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Tuncheon Rocket, go!